Uh, hey everybody, I'm Gary Ugaric, the writer and director of Deadlands the Rising and Deadlands 2 Trapped. Um, have to forgive the sort of quasi really low quality video here, but I'm shooting this on my digital cell camera. Uh, basically, I wanted to give you guys a tutorial on how to make your own HD DVDs. Um, uh, two types of HD DVDs actually, or three, if, depending on how you look at it. Uh, we're going to use RyDisc uh, data, which are 15 gigabyte single layer HD DVDs. And how you can tell an HD DVD from a regular DVD is the backside. An HD DVD has a red background, like this one. And this is a DVD dual layer, which we're going to use to make a 3x DVD, otherwise known as a 9 gigabyte HD DVD. So just shy below, so it's dual layer but small. Um, some people ask me what type of dual layer media I use. I actually buy Win Data from uh, Micro Center, and people are like, whoa, Win Data, oh, that's crap. You know what? Uh, media is not crap. Sometimes media is, but nine times out of ten, it's the burner you own, the software you use, and how well you maintain your computer. Uh, you cannot be ripping DVD after DVD after DVD if you have a computer running Windows XP with 512 megs of RAM in it. Sorry, just isn't going to work. Um, you need one gigabyte, you know, two gigabytes. I, mean, I personally, I use four in my machines when I run Windows XP. Uh, this machine that we're that you see behind me, you're in my little office area here at Wet n Wild Radio Films. Uh, you are looking at a machine that is running Windows Vista Ultimate, and it's only because the HD DVD software is not compatible with Windows 7. Uh, and XP is kind of old and outdated now, so uh, had to go with something, you know, uh, newer. But anyways, we're going to be using ULED DVD Movie Factory, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to make an HD DVD. I'm going to show you how to make a standard HD DVD, which is just like a regular DVD with, you know, standalone menus. And I'm going to show you a trick that's not, not many people know how to do in ULED, which is how to make an advanced HD DVD, which is the type with the pop-out menus like you would see on a regular HD DVD or Blu-ray. You know, you're watching the movie, you hit the menu button, menu comes up, but the movie still plays in the background. Now, with ULED DVD Movie Factory Plus, uh, the HD DVD Advanced feature only comes if you have the HD DVD pack, uh, which is like a $20 add-on. Now, what some people don't realize is when you open the Advanced thing, it gives you two options, a 4.7 gigabyte HD DVD, which is a DVD-R, single layer, or the 8.5 gigabyte DVD dual layer, which are 3X DVDs. Now, uh, the problem in that it lies is that it doesn't tell you you can do 15 and 30 gigabyte discs, but you can. It just doesn't give you the option, but I'm going to show you how to get that option and make a working disc. I am uh, going to open ULED DVD uh, Movie Factory uh, 6, which is uh, 6 plus, and I have the HD DVD, uh, an HD pack, excuse me, uh, installed with it. Uh, together the software runs about 100 bucks. Now, I promised I would show you how to do an HD DVD advanced, as you can see right here. Okay, and I was going to show you how to do it with a 15 giga layer disc. 15 gig layer, excuse me, 15 gigabyte single layer disc. Now, first thing we have to do is if you go into this here and then you click next down at the bottom right hand of the screen, uh, you'll notice that the only options that you get are 4.7 gigabyte and 8.5 gigabyte DVD. Now we are making an advanced HD DVD. You saw me click on it and you see it says HD DVD right there. Now what you want to do in this situation is you're going to want to click the back button and then you're going to want to hit new project hit HD DVD standard which is up here and click next and it's going to ask you if you want to save your current project. You're going to say no. Now what you want to do is go down here and choose HD DVD 15 gigabyte. And then you want to go back to the back button and click back again. Now you want to go back up to the new project button which is up top here and you want to click HD DVD Advanced again and then you want to click 
next. And then it's going to ask you if you want to save your current project. Say no. If you notice, now it gives you the option for HDDVD 15 gigabyte. Okay, so uh, you got the ULED uh, system open. Uh, you're rocking a 15 gig disk, um, you know, which we had talked about earlier. Now, what you want to do is start uh, adding media files. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add media files. Now, I'm going to build a Walking Dead uh, HD DVD single layer advanced. Okay. Now, you want to click this button up here, which is to add your media. And then you want to find your files, which are here in the window. So, we're going to add. Let's see, it's a list, so I can actually read the names here. Uh, we're going to do episodes four through. Previously on AMC's The Walking Dead. We're going to do episodes four, five, and six because I've already made one, two, and three. Now, uh, you've added them in. Uh, the system's working and it's adding. As you can see, you've got your three video titles here. Now, if you'll notice, um, you've used up everything of the 15 gigs that's available just you know it's there so what you got to do is you got to go in and adjust the settings because you know these are HD files so you really can't fit a lot on here so what you want to do is you want to hit the button down here and then this window is going to pop up as you can see it says project settings and you want to change your MPEG settings and we're going to do a customized now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch this to 1920 by 1080. We're going to leave this as lower field first simply because I haven't played with the, there's a frame thing which is your progressive. I haven't played with it. Uh, don't know what, it, what it's going to be like, but I'll play with it uh, sooner or later and we'll see how it goes. Now, um, as you can see, this is set to a frame rate of 25 frames per second. That's the PAL format. I'm going to change it back to NTSC. Something you have to know about ULED is that it does lock the HD DVDs you make to either NTSC or PAL. So when I make the Deadlands 2 and Deadlands 1 HD DVDs myself, I have to uh, actually physically make them based on where people live that buy them. So, uh, but I'm going to show you how to change the setting if you're stuck in PAL mode. Most of you in the U.S. that are doing this uh, will already, already automatically have NTSC settings. Uh, U.K. people will already have PAL. I'll show you how to switch back and forth. Now, we're going to change the compression. Actually, you know what? We're going to stop here for a second because I actually have to go in and change the NTSC I just remembered because it's going to reset all my settings. Now, to do this, you're going to want to go down here and hit this button. And then you're going to want to go to Preferences or hit F6. And it's going to bring up a box. And the box here is the TV system as you want. Is uh, You'll see it says NTSC and PAL. We're going to switch this over to NTSC. And you want to hit OK. And then hit OK again. Now it's going to take a minute to shift everything as it's doing. You can see we still are over 15 gigabytes. Now come down here and hit this. Go to MPEG Settings. Customize. 1920 by 1080. Now you want to go up to this tab that says compression. Leave the quality at 90. I don't see a problem with it. Uh, there's a you can't operate the drop down box as it's locked to MPEG 2. Now you want to come down to this variable rate and you want to change this to constant and you want to change the value to 12,000. Okay. Then you want to change LPCM audio to Dolby Digital Audio. 2.0 left and right, 256, good enough because the source material, this is off my DVR, so not really going to, you know, it's really not going to make a difference. Um, and then what you want to do is, is, but you can change the options to 384 or 448, which are standard DVD uh, Dolby Digital Codex. But for our purposes, 256 is fine. It'll actually save us some space, give us more room to have better quality video. Now, uh, I'm going to hit OK. You definitely do not want to convert uh, compliant MPEG files if you are using MPEG files. I'm not using MPEG files. I'm using uh, DivX uh, converted uh, files uh, from my DVR. So, uh, you want to go up here and hit OK. And if you'll notice, now it says we've only used 11.76 gigabytes of space. 
and we still have about uh, about two gigabytes of room to play with. But we don't want to get too cocky just yet because we need to add uh, toys and stuff to this. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring your mouse down here to the next button and click next. This is going to bring us to the menus. Now you only get certain choices of menus. Uh, up here it'll say pop out. Uh, as you can see, I'll zoom in here. Uh, basically, you just get these uh, pop-up 3D menus. Now, me personally, I use this menu here because I like it the best. And let me zoom back out again. And you'll see you have the background and then your menu bar here on the right side. Now, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go into the Edit tab, which is right up here next to the gallery. And then we're going to click this button down here, right below the menu. And this is going to allow us to change the background. See that background? Well, that's going to go bye-bye. Now, we're going to go to this tab here that says Background Media. Uh, I know it's a little hard to see, but it does say Background Image Video. I'm going to click this button. You're going to click the top thing, that says, the top item says select background image for this menu. And I already have one downloaded called Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 1, Days Gone, which is the days gone by. And as you'll notice, it has now changed to a hallway picture from The Walking Dead. Okay, now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to edit the title. Now you can do this just by double clicking on it, highlighting it, and then typing out The Walking Dead, down here, Season 1, Episodes 4 through 6. Simple enough, right? Now we want to go in and change fonts and things like that, make sure the spelling is good, um, it looks okay, good, Walking Dead, blah, 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 it's a little hard to see, white background, some stuff here, but it's good there. Now. Keeping this highlighted, you'll see over here to your uh, left, there's a setting called uh, Font Settings. Click that, and it's a typical font box like you'd find in Word or, you know, whatever other programs. Uh, and we're going to use, um, I like Impact, is personally my favorite, um, only because it's what I use for the titles for my Deadlands films. So we're going to use Impact. And uh, it's set to 62. We're going to reduce this down to 48 just so it isn't taking up so much screen space. And then we're going to come down here. I know it's a little hard to see, but it's the color box. And we're going to change it to red. And then we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, it's now a little smaller, Walking Dead, Season 1, Episodes 4 through 6. Now, right down here, this is the tab to edit that menu. Um, now, what we're going to do, too, is we're going to add some music to this. So... You're going to go up here where it says background music, you're going to click that and uh, select a music track for this menu. Uh, we're going to use the Walking Dead opening credits. Now it's in. Now you'll have a background menu that loops about every 20 seconds.